All right, hello painting class. Um, what I'm gonna talk about is the beginning of your painting and starting your painting. So this is my black and white painting, um, which is almost finished. Um, I made it for demos last semester. Um, so you can kind of see um, what an almost finished painting looks like. This part's finished, um, but I have some work on the things and a little bit on the dinosaur, but the background's finished, the fabric's finished, and the helmet's finished. Um, and so, but I don't have a good video to show you how to do the underpainting, so I drew it again. It's not perfectly drawn, uh, so I will, um, but I'm okay with that because as you paint, you can adjust the shapes and change things around. So just want you to be aware, like I want you to draw as best as you can, but if it's not perfect, I don't want you to spend hours and hours and hours drawing and never get started with painting. You, I'm working on paper because it's what I have around. You're gonna be on canvas, which is a little bit hard to draw on. You are welcome to start right in on paint. So when you watch the videos for this one, you'll see that I have a different underpainting and I started with paint. It's pretty messy um, and it's not as accurate um, and I have to make a judgment as I go, but starting right with paint is totally acceptable. It usually makes students who are new to painting nervous to do that, um, but I just want you to know that is an option. Drawing on canvas can be hard. This time I drew. I'm also going to post some videos that will help you learn to draw if you haven't taken drawing yet. Um, so I'll post those on that first page for the first part of the assignment um, and you can watch those videos to kind of get an idea of how to draw. Okay, so once you, your image is either drawn out with pencil or drawn out with paint, you are going to block in the darks and lights. You're not, uh, you're not trying to paint the texture and that kind of thing. You want to just block in the darks and lights. I actually put white here, but I don't want to use it. I wasn't thinking when I laid it out. So I'm going to actually scoop this off to the side. I don't think I'll get to the point where I need white and I'll show you why. Okay. So a round brush and I would say like a flat brush is about these sizes. Uh, a, you can go a little bit bigger with the flat brush for bigger areas if you want. Uh, you don't want to do this underpainting with a s small brush. Uh, if you, you can also use a bigger round brush. Um, if you go smaller, it's going to just take you forever and our goal is not precision at this point. The, the wonderful thing about painting is you are layering and layering and layering and layering. And as you layer, you get more precise. And those first layers, it's okay to be messy. It's okay to not be perfect. Um, actually, if you make those first layers too good, it can be hard to layer on top of them because you love them so much. Uh, but the thing is, is even if it's the best first layer ever, it's still a first layer. It doesn't feel like a finished product, finished painting. So I, uh, um, I don't want you to turn in something that's half done. Um, so just go for it. It's scary. I'm not there to push you. If we're in the classroom, I'd be like, go, go, go. Um, but on your own, um, or at least over Zoom, you need to, to do it. Okay. So... Um, I'm going to mix some black. So we did that last time. Get some black mixed up. It's a little brown. Let's see. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to water it down. At this point, I'm just using water. And I'm going to figure out, like, where is it dark? And I'm going to add that. So again, I'm blocking out I'm blocking out the darkest areas and my brush strokes aren't perfect. Just trying to fill in, okay? So don't 
get to this idea that everything has to look great. You kind of just, you don't want to lose all the shapes, but also your underpainting shouldn't be, you shouldn't be drawing all the detail, like the top of the dinosaur has tons of detail. The, the sheets has tons of detail. And if you really uh, focus on all the detail, I want to mix more black than I did because <laughs> I ran out fast. Okay. Okay, so again, water it down a little bit. Good thing with acrylic is you can do a second layer really fast, but again, don't worry too much. This is also black up here. This part over here is pretty light. So again, I'm painting like it's watercolor, so a lot messier than watercolor. So it's still really dark. Put that in. Okay. This I'm putting in actually the top part is pretty light, so I'm putting in shadows. I'm kind of doing curved structure because um, the fabric's got curves to it. I'll post a photo that I'm working from so you can say, see that. So I'm kind of put, putting the curved in. Then I'm doing it really light around the dark. So see, it's just, it's not forming into fabric yet. And that's okay. I do use those curves just to start getting a feel because every layer counts. Um, but I'm not there just yet like I'm kind of like this my photo was too long so I ended up cutting off parts here which is okay if you need to do that if you need to not show the whole photo to fit it on your canvas that is okay dark. It's very watery. That's all right. just want this thin layer. This is the only time you're going to paint like this. Uh, as the painting goes, you're going to thicken it up. so I can see those curves there. Okay. There we go. I'm going to get, this is pretty light back here. And then it's dark again back here. And then it gets lighter. A little bit darker, so you can see. Let's see, is it in the, oh, I'm, it's down here. Can't really see my watery spot, but I'm just adding water when I need to go dark, lighter, and then I go to the source to go darker. But I don't ever just take this and put it on. That would be too thick for this layer, not for future layers. And then it's lighter again. Um, add some to the watery mixture, get that darker. So you, it, if it's wet, you can kind of work into it. But again, you're not trying to blend perfectly at this point. 
Okay, so this is dark down here, but not as dark as the inner part. So I'm just going to fill this in. Nothing elaborate again. There's some circle shapes here that I'm just kind of going around. keep the basic shape of stuff but not too worried oh, it's super dark and any mistakes are fine we are okay with mistakes get those shapes in okay I switched to a round one You can see, I don't know if you can see on the video, but one of my blacks is a little bit more blue and one is a little more brown. That's fine too. Like as you develop, you want to kind of get the same blacks and grays. But in these first couple rounds, I think it's okay to just go for what you got. Trying to get the light gray on there. Round shapes. Sometimes it can be stressful to Feel like you're losing all the drawing that you made which is why I say don't draw too detailed because you can't really paint the detail in the beginning it's just impossible so try to make your drawing pretty basic get the outline in the basic shapes it's hard like this gets really detailed over here and I kind of had to put stuff in but you don't want to get like you know my fabrics just these strips it's not all of them I will come in later okay so now i'm gonna do the dinosaur it's pretty light on top so you just use the brush that i really love round brushes because i feel like i have a lot of control um but you use the brush that you feel good with um like i said i would suggest a flat or uh around oh that's really dark uh, I'm working super fast. Your painting might not be this wet. Acrylic dries really fast, so my underpainting super watery, which I'm okay with. Uh, it might bother you. You might want to wait for the layers to dry. Uh, also, it might just not happen that way because it dries so fast. Okay, and then it gets pretty dark in here, so I'm going to get that dark part in there. It's a little bit lighter. Oh, it's still, that's still dark. You see how when it was too dark, I just add water to my brush. I'm not, and you, you can br wipe it a little bit if you don't like the water to be so thick, like runny, that's bothering you. I personally like it like that. Um, I'm okay with this first layer being messy, but just you do what's comfortable if you want to wipe your brush. In general, when you're painting, wiping your brush is like really important. I find that uh, students do not wipe their brush enough. Like if you're painting when you're not doing it watery and it's like super thick of paint, um, they'll just blob it on there and you really want to clean it like that and maybe wipe a little bit. Um, so, brown. Clarify a little bit of this.
just a little bit shape here. The eye back in, a little bit of shape there. And then this is dark here. Get the ribbon in. And these circle necklace thing. Okay, and then I'm, oh, sometimes the blue and the brown don't mix properly. Now all of a sudden I have a whole bunch of blue. Okay, um, getting it really wet again. Just putting the shape in. So, like, if this puddle would make you anxious or just you don't like it, we go like this first and then see how I have more control. So, I'm not going to do a ton of shadow work in the dinosaur because it's so detailed that it's really hard. So, I'm just putting all like one gray in there. If I came in and did the subtleties of the shadow, um, it would just get covered up anyway. So I'm just doing that for this layer. So if there's an object, like a big object, I would, you know, do like dark here, lighter here, darker there. But for an object that has a lot of little detail, it's okay if you just pick like the core color, which means like the mid-tone value, the, uh, you know, that's in your chart, the mid-tone in your chart, and you just do the whole thing that's okay all right I'm done so this is the underpainting again it's not beautiful it's not perfect that's okay but the thing that's important is my painting is covered with paint and I understand what shapes there are there's dinosaur there's helmet there's the thing um so um yeah that's what you want to do for yours get that paint on there uh the faster you get paint on there, the faster you're going to want to cover it up. If you make this first layer too perfect, you're not going to want to fix it. Uh, and you can't paint, it's not, this isn't a watercolor class, you can't get that first layer and have it perfect. It just doesn't work that way. So get paint on there, slap it on, then uh, cover it up.